Today we're going to be discussing and previewing arguably the biggest fight of the decade so far, where the world's pound for pound best boxer Floyd Money Mayweather takes on the pretender to his throne, Saul Canelo Alvarez, in a £154 unification matchup. Clive, it's a fight that a lot of people said Floyd wouldn't take. He's into his second fight with the six fight Showtime deal and a lot of people thought, why take Alvarez now? But he's taken the fight. Why do you think this has happened? Well, I think he needs to take the fight. He needs to take the fight because he wants the fight, the fans want the fight, the TV want, want the fight. His last, buy, uh, his, his last bout, actually, um, it didn't gross too many buys. So I think this against somebody like Alvarez, who is a Mexican icon now, he's coming up, he's, uh, he's won every single fight so far. So he, this fight makes sense for everybody, you know? This is a big, big fight. Clive, let's talk about Floyd Mayweather's strengths and weaknesses going into this bout with Alvarez. Well, his strengths are he's mobile, um, he's got the experience, uh, he's a great counter-puncher. Um, there there, he hasn't got too many weaknesses, which is why he's the pound-for-pound pound number, number one in the world. A lot of people have said that he started to slow down in a few of his last fights against Cotto. He, he maybe stood and traded more than we've seen him do so in the past. And against Guerrero, people were saying that the legs looked that little bit slower. Now, Floyd's counter to that is that he wanted to make his fights a bit more exciting for the fans. Do you believe that line or do you think age is finally catching up with him? I think it's a bit of both, but I don't think any fighter wants to go in there and wants to get hit. So against C Cotto, yes... He did take a few too many punches, but you know what? I think he, I think he wanted to prove to himself he could tough it out. I think he wanted to. I think he he wanted to prove to everybody, the fans and everybody, that he could actually fight as well. You know, and and I think he pr proved that as well. But at the same time, there were chinks in his armour there, and he was he was starting to slow down a bit, whether he admits it or not. You know, at the age of th 36. It's only natural that age will catch up with you at, at some stage, but it's not like a Roy Jones type fighter where he relied on his reflexes. Floyd's got very much a tighter defence and he, he works his defence rather than just relying on athleticism. Oh, uh, that's, that's exactly right. He does. I mean, Floyd has always kept himself supremely fit. He eats well, he lives well. Just despite what happens in the nightclubs and wherever he goes, he lives well he, and he trains very, very hard. And he, he, he knows exactly what, he even picks the right opponents at the right time. So he knows exactly what, what, he, what he's doing, which is why he's the pound for pound best. And outside of that sort of flamboyant lifestyle, he's been known to be, like you say, a gym rat, in shape all year round, but also spars the very, very top guys. I think when he was sparring for Ricky Hatton's fight, he was sparring Love Moore and Do, who was a world champion at the time. So it goes mm. to show how seriously he takes his opinions. Yeah, he's always on top, top of his game. As I say, he studies everybody. He studies all his opponents. He's probably got his opponents lined up two or three fights in advance, you know, which is maybe why he took the Cotto fight and knew he needed to tough it out, knowing full well a, a year later he's going to be boxing someone like Alvarez. There's a great moment in that Cotto fight when he was, he was cut on, on his nose, which is something quite rare for, for Floyd to have a cut in a fight, and his nose was bleeding, and he looks up at the big screen and he just sort of chuckles, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, he, that's what I say. I, I think he, you know what, he looked at the camera and he thought, I've proved I can fight, and I'll carry on fighting. So for this fight against Alvarez, what are the keys to victory for Floyd Mayweather? What does he have to do to make sure well, he comes like out with Like I say, he needs, to be, he needs to keep on the move. He needs to stay on the move, which is what he always does. And what he's going to do is he's got to counter punch like he does. So that means by bringing Alvarez in, let him come in towards you, counter punch him. And what, what, what Floyd does all the time is he brings fighters onto the ropes, he ducks and dives, and then he unleashes his counter punches, ties them up and moves off. What he's got to do is make sure he gets out of there very quickly. Because against a young fighter like uh, Alvarez, who can punch, he's got to make sure he's on top of his game. And if he is slowing down in any way, shape or form, then in the later rounds, he could, he, he, he could come unstuck. So he's going to have to be, and I think he knows this, he needs to be on top of his game for this fight from the first round to the twelfth round. Now let's turn our attention to Saul Alvarez. Let's have a look at what his key weaknesses and strengths are going into this fight. Well, his strengths is obviously his youth. 23 years old. Um, he's a world champion. He's been a pro since he was six, since he was 16 years old. So, but but he's had 43 fights. 
you know, as opposed to Floyd's 44. And for so such a young guy, that's, that's sort that's of unheard right. of, really. At that, at that. So he's learned his trade coming up, and he's become a world champion. So he may well think he's ready to, to fight Floyd now at the age of 23. There may be some question marks about the, the level of opposition there. Clive, I just want to ask you a question about Golden Boy and their involvement in this fight, because obviously they've worked very closely with Floyd uh, for the last few years since Floyd left top rank, and they've been building up Alvarez in the same time as well, and, and he's their next big superstar. What happens if Floyd beats their next big superstar? Are they at a loss then, or is it...? Well, no, they're not, because I believe that Golden Boy win both ways because they've been working with Floyd for a long time now, because they've been working with him actually um, since I believe Oscar fought Floyd back in 2007. So no matter who wins, I see Golden Boy winning both ways. For Alvarez to win this fight and to, and to beat the seemingly unbeatable Floyd Mayweather, what does he have to do, Clive? I think he has to make Floyd work for 12 rounds. He has to walk him down, which, which also could be to his cost because he needs to walk him down because he needs to get his shots off. But at the same time, Floyd is a great counter puncher. So he needs to be careful there as well. Maybe he's got to take a few shots to get Floyd where he wants to be and unleash a few shots. Maybe go to the body, concentrate on the body shots to slow Floyd down. But maybe Floyd's a bit too cute for that. You know, so it's, it's an interesting one, but I think Al Alvarez has to do that. He has to, he has to walk Floyd down and he has to make Floyd fight. He can't allow Floyd just to tee off on him. Otherwise, he's going to, before he knows it, he's five or six rounds down. Clive, do you think the fact that this fight is at a catch weight is an advantage, a massive advantage to Floyd? Well, no, because it's made at 152. Um, the thing is, three, three weeks ago, um, six weeks before the fight, Floyd weighed in, I think, 150 pounds anyway. And he that's probably fully walked closed. around, yeah, exactly, yeah. 150 pounds. So he's at his maximum strength anyway. He's a great athlete, he's at his maximum strength. Whereas Alvarez weighed in at 166 pounds. Now he's got six weeks to take that off to get down to 152. Now, you could argue that that works against him. At, because when he comes to the weigh-in, he's going to have to weigh 152 pounds. But 24 hours later, when he gets in that ring, he will be 160 plus, whereas Floyd will be still be 150. So he, he could even be 14 pounds heavier on fight night. It's amazing to think Alvarez used to make wealth weight when he's walking. You know, he's he's, he's well, sort of he walking did. around in the 170s or that's maybe right. even higher. You know, he's a big man. You know, so that's that's an, another reason. It could work for him, it could work against him. It depends how well he puts on the weight back on 24 hours before the fight. Only he's going to know that. 